it's not always the best idea for the setter to fake the block because it's different, it's totally different. And everybody will react and judge our decision. Does this uh, influence your setting? To prepare yourself even before the points and he's scoring because he's on fire. If you take now a uh, like a top setter in the world, I think there is no... I don't like so much, for example, a really high parabola. But the beauty is not winning the game, sir. And our outside is a 65% efficiency, for example, in four. Uh, the transition can be decisive part of the game. The most important in the end for the setter is also it's the moment when I'm holding a little bit more the ball. I'm here at a Volley Coach Show podcast with a French setter Benjamin Tonuti. Olympic winner and our topic is uh, about uh, about setting of course because Benjamin is setter and we should speak about how to play in transition when you are as a setter in the back zone when you are not on the net and you are uh, just uh, after the serve or in the back zone so I'm interested in your advice for all our uh, setters and uh, players which are interested uh, to know about this topic. Uh, hi everyone, uh, thank you for for the invitation. And um, and yeah, I can start about this uh, topic about uh, transition. Uh, for sure, uh, maybe it's the best part of setting because uh, because when I'm second line, I have always the possibility to have a three spiker in the in the first line, and then the pike. So so yeah, I have uh, like a four spiker for sure. It's a uh, it's uh it's deep it's there is very often big difference between the the setter when the like me I'm first line and second line because very often when I'm first line uh, some outside hitter like open and up outside hitter are helping a little bit more on the first tempo and for sure when the when me as a setter I'm second line uh, very often teams are playing much more open because the ball ball is maybe faster. And it's more difficult to block uh, the opposite when he's first line. Okay, and do you have some uh, kind of a system or style uh, of uh, thinking <laughs> how you prepare for this transition? Because of course there is a lot of things which are influencing your decision. But uh, do you have some uh, like uh, before every transition like your goal, or do you just play spontaneously? I mean, it's it's depend of the moment, depends on the game, depends of uh, of uh, opponent team uh, how they how they are in block. Uh, maybe I will organize in different way if, uh, if the opposite uh, of the other team is helping a lot. For example, uh, maybe I will, I will call more seven to play seven over. Uh, so it depends a lot about the tactic, about uh, what we see before the game, how they are like reacting of, uh, of the set. Uh, and also, Depends on the quality of uh, of my team, of my spiker. Uh, so it's a lot of information in the same moment. It's not on, not only about what we see before the game, but also how I see the game, how I see my spikers. And then, yeah, to it's not always the best idea for the setter to fake the block, but it's also to be effective. And uh, and this is the most important to in the end. Uh, a result is uh, is important. Uh, I say many times that I prefer in the end to to put my spiker with two block and he's scoring because he's on fire and he's scoring really a lot of transition than to play uh, maybe one spiker one against one and he's not scoring. In the end, uh, in the end, uh, the result is the is the most important. Uh, I completely agree that uh, we play volleyball four points. Uh, we, of course, uh, somebody is playing for the beauty, but the beauty is not winning the games. Uh, the points are winning the games. And do you also uh, think about uh, your transition? Because sometimes in transition, they are not coming the idle bo bo balls because uh, there is a difficult defense. So you don't have a ball uh, close to the net. Uh, and uh, do you also speak with your players in the transition that you want some kind of specific balls? Because for example, when there is a Japan playing uh, and, uh, for example, the setter is in the front row, I see that the libero is always playing like a fast ball to him. So they have a, like a, a system for this. And you prefer that uh, when there is a transition and they can give you a higher ball, you prefer higher ball or you prefer some semi kind of a ball or fast ball? I love, 
I don't like so much, for example, a really high parabola, for example. I prefer uh, not so fast, but uh, but pass to give me the the rhythm and can give also the rhythm of the spiker. I mean, for the middle blocker, for uh, for the pipe, uh, for outside, for the opposite. I like this kind of ball that uh, it gives the tempo of uh, of the game also. So, so yeah, then for sure transition is also a difference between perfect transition. It means that uh, perfect uh, pass, uh, perfect defense inside the three meters, but also it's transition uh, out of the three meters. And then I think uh, the most important is to to give the, the good ball uh, on the good spot and then the spiker will have more possibility to to choose the best direction, uh, the best spike. And this is the most important, I, I think, also in transition. And uh, do you think, uh, especially in transition, uh, uh, because some setters have some uh, some uh, characteristics, somebody likes to play for a long, for an outsider, somebody likes to play a lot of uh, pipe or with the, with the middle, do you also think about in transition in every game that uh, maybe now I should play a little bit with more with the middle because they are going always uh, uh, to to block uh, my outsider or opposite? Or do you just uh, have your style and you you have like uh, uh, the ball is coming to exactly this spot and I know that the, my, my best ball is over there? For sure, I have some characteristic and I think I think every every setter have, uh, have characteristic in this kind of ball, for example. But then also, for sure, it's uh, it's up to to the teammate sometimes to the staff to tell you, okay, watch out, man! Now they are following him in this uh, in this way. So so and look also, for example, uh, you are playing. I don't know. I will take an example. You are playing first tempo pipe uh, on this ball, so they are really close uh, because they know that you are playing first first tempo pipe. And our outside is a sixty-five percent efficiency, for example, in four. So I have to information that okay, I'm playing a lot for tempo pipe, and also if I set, for example, for my outside, is really effective. So this can be also some connection during the during the game and during the moment. I think it's really important to have like feedback, feedback sometimes from the from the bench, from the staff, and also from uh, from players. I agree that uh, the stuff uh, will be and always uh, was uh, important because they are seeing the uh, game from other perspective. But I was speaking with Mika Christensen and he said that at the end it's uh, his decision, it's the setter decision who is deciding. So even if you have uh, information, some uh, stats uh, from the from the from your staff, uh, you have to decide. You agree with this? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. In the end, we decide, and uh, and how to say. Uh, we decide, and uh, and then everybody will react and judge our decision. <laughs> In the end, yeah, it's always so, easier to judge than to exactly. <laughs> so, so for sure, we are we are really important because we decide who, who gives the ball, and also sometimes important moment of the game of, uh, oh, like for the title for uh, for every moment. So. So for sure it's important, but the most important in the end for the setter is also uh, when you decide to do it, it's to do it convinced. Because if you do it not convinced, <laughs> then you will make mistake of quality of the set. And uh, so maybe the choice will be not good and also the quality will be not good. So at least when you decide, you choose, you take the responsibility and you do it in the good way. This is most important, I think. And I also think that you will uh, agree with me that uh, even if you are trying to set your best balls all the time, if, if you want to be precise, sometimes you are not setting close to the net, you are setting to two meters. And then it also depends on your spikers. And I think uh, in Yastrembe, in your French team, you have a good spikers, which are not just going uh, for like full power all the time and trying to crush the block, but they are using also the recycle because I think recycle is coming or is now very very important part of the game because this will give you more opportunity to have better uh, efficiency in the attack. Sure, for sure. Uh, the recycle is, is quite or quite important. I think Zaxa showed this for the last three Champions League. Uh, they won one with me and two after. Uh, that uh, it was the team who who was doing this really good. Uh, we are doing also really great uh, with uh, with Yashambia. 
Um, if you can't, we, you were speaking about Japan and, uh, and Japan is also a team who is doing really well, French national team also. So, so for sure, this, uh, this system of recycle, uh, can give you more opportunity to have better ball in transition, because if the ball is not perfect and you play against the block, then you can have again, a free ball and to have more chains to, to score. So. So for sure, it's a uh, it's really important part of the game, and I think uh, and I think most of the team are doing this now uh, uh, because I think it's it's really helpful. And are you also sometimes uh, getting uh, mad or like uh, happy with your spiker that he's solving your situation or that he didn't solve it well? Do you also communicate with them that uh, sometimes I know that uh, there is a famous video of uh, Kulo Velasco speaking that uh, the spiker is asking the ball has to be a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there because they are not scoring point and the setter is like blamed for all these mistakes. But I think you are not like this, that you want to uh, support your players. But on the other hand, uh, you know, if somebody is not performing, sometimes, you know, you have to raise your voice. I, I, I always try to give the best ball balls, the best ball for the spiker. Uh, but for sure, sometimes the spiker have to find a solution. Like it's, it's too easy to say all the time that there's a mistake on the setter or something like this. I think um, spiker have a ability, especially on high level, uh, to manage a situation. Then for sure my goal is always to to give the best ball bo uh, possible to to my guys. So so then I'm not the guy I'm not the setter who I like to blame the spiker. For example, uh, I will always try to to give my best and understand um, what was wrong. For example, and also to 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 speak with the guys and say maybe okay this ball you 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 are rating this ball here, but man there is no sense. For example, I don't know. For example, in transition, fast transition, the guy asked me, for example, shoot, and uh, he's, he's alone, for example, the, the opposite is on the floor, I cannot play first tempo, and then this guy will take block because two men blocks come to him. I would tell him, man, there is no sense to call me shoot, better to call super and you will have more choice because you, for sure, you will have two men blocks. So, for example, it's I'm more like this kind of setter who try to find a solution together with my spiker. And uh, there is also a situation because now, for example, in your uh, French national teams, uh, you are great two setters. Uh, there is a Brizard, there is you, and sometimes you are uh, changing. Some, some, sometimes he's playing, sometimes you are playing, and sometimes uh, you come to the game at the end of the set uh, for uh, with opposite, uh, like uh, for this double substitution, and you go in the back zones. Uh, Does this uh, influence your setting? Because uh, for its important part of the set, uh, there is a transition, and you know that uh, your opposite uh, can be can be colder. Or do you just uh, have the same uh, the same mind like uh, when you would start in the game? Um, no, for sure it's different because when you when you are playing all the sets, uh, you have this kind of rhythm of side out, rhythm of game, and everything. When you are coming for double substitution in end of set is different because you are coming and maybe you will have two or three sets because maybe can be mistaken service, mistaken service, reception far from the net, liberal is setting and you know, so so it's important to to you don't have this kind of rhythm of the game, but I think it's really important all the time when you are, for example, on the bench and you're watching the 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 game from outside to analyze how is going the game, to analyze how is going, how are going the the spikers in the team, uh, to feel uh, if your your partner, your opposite, which you are coming with you inside is uh, is ready, is hot, is uh, you have determination. So yeah, it's 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 important to because it's different. It's totally different. And I want to also touch uh, the technical part of the setting when you are in the back zone uh, in the transition, because uh, this means that you have to be fast uh, with your with your legs. And uh, uh, of course, that uh, everybody knows that uh, when you are setting, we want to set with our fingers. We don't want to bump so much. But if you have to bump, uh, you prefer to play, I think, a higher ball for a longer distance, or do you have some kind of a, a strategy for your bump? You know. I'm not so powerful setter about arm, finger, and everything. So for sure, on the long distance, it's uh, it's sometimes, especially when I'm setting back, uh, it's the moment when I'm holding a little bit more the ball, I think. And this gives me the power sometimes to play on long distance. 
but then also I am this kind of player and setter who is like playing with the tempo of uh, of my hand, of my uh, my timing of jump. So yeah, this is something I'm using a little bit uh, with my body also. So I think it's I say very often that there is not for me okay there is the books about a perfect set a perfect system of setting but if you if you take now uh, like a top setter in the world i think there is no there is no two setter with the same technique so i think it's difficult to to just pretend that there is perfect technique technique and uh, and to only follow this uh, this system no, and I also meant that uh, when you are coming to the ball, because there is one topic, a split step, uh, when we are receiving, we say that uh, you should uh, make a split step just before or at the at the touch of the ball of the server. Do you also use a split step when you are, you know, preparing for your set or when you are starting for the ball? This I have to maybe check on the video. I don't <laughs> know exactly <laughs> because I think it, I think start to be like uh, how to say habits for me. Uh, but for sure, I, I am doing one step to to just uh, to just have the possibility when the reception is going out from the arm of the guy to have to go fast under the ball. And this, for sure, you have to do some preparation. So small jump, I think it's uh, probably I'm doing. I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And uh, I would like to ask you also about your like. Uh... Uh, one most important uh, advice uh, for the setters, uh, how to think about this uh, transition, how to be concentrated, how to be, you know, prepared for all these balls, because there is a lot of balls in transition. Sometimes in one uh, rally, there can be five, six transitions. So what would be your advice for these uh, setters, which are like on intermediate level? I think it's uh, transition can, can uh, how to say, uh, the transition can be decisive part of the game because with transition you can win the game, you can win the set, you can make the difference. And so in transition you have to be really focused about what's happened in the past and what you should take about the decision to be the more effective. This is really important in transition because you can play amazing set really good side out perfect quality of side that you are 23 23 you have one transition and you don't make the right choice the good set and you can lose the set so so i think it's really important in transition to be really focused and to to prepare yourself even before the point that okay you have to think about okay my my guy my guy is serving the first thing it can happen, it's overpass and we have free ball. So what will happen if we have free ball? You have to think about this even before the point. What will happen if we have defense negative? Where I should give the ball? Who is the worst blocker, for example? Uh, if I have like a perfect defense, what I should play? I think just before the action, you have to think about every kind of situation because the transition is can be really important. Yes, and this is, I think, very difficult for the setter because setter is the brain of the team. He has to think about uh, all these uh, possibilities uh, to find a ideal, to find an ideal solution, and it's not easy always. And uh, even if you make a good solution, sometimes you will, you are not scoring the point. This is, uh, this is, of course, that uh, the situation that you have to face sometimes. No. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I would tell you one story, for example, that uh, this happened to me. It was not transition, but it was uh, like really important moment i remember we were playing vnl uh 2017 or 18 in curitiba in brazil and we were playing in brazil the final of vnl uh it was tie break 14 12 for us in the tie break uh we 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 are uh, we are in service i go out they put one tall guy for the block uh instead of me so i was on the bench and I was even not thinking that we will do breakpoint and we will win the, the game. I was thinking, okay, now probably they will do side out. So I will come back inside again. And I was checking, okay, now the rotation of Brazil will be like this. This will be the server. We will have this reception where I should give the ball to finish the game. And I was thinking like this. And 
maybe we can do this breakpoint and win the but i was already thinking from the bench let's go i will come inside and we have to do side out so so this is mentality of uh, of the setter i think it's really important Yes, I think that we could speak about this uh, much longer. And my last question is regarding the Olympics, because now there are coming Olympics. Uh, you as a French team are playing at home. You are the Olympic winners. And I think that uh, you we want to make the best possible results also at home. But it will be a big uh, pressure on you uh, to play at uh, at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, for sure it will be. I mean, it's difficult to say because it will be first time that we will play Olympic at home. But uh, we have experience from Olympic that uh, it's different competition, weird competition sometimes. Uh, for sure, we I think three teams are maybe better than us in this moment. I think like uh, Poland, Italy, uh, USA. Uh, but I think uh, in these 12 teams who will participate to the Olympics, especially now with the new system of qualification, I think... Uh, Everybody can go and win the medal, so so we have to to prepare ourselves for top competition. We'll have the crowd with us, and I hope uh, and I hope uh, we'll get uh, another medal. Okay, I wish that uh, your dreams are coming true for the medal, and I thank you very much uh, for your time, your advice, and uh, expert insights. Uh, what you said about the setting, and I believe that many setters will uh, will take. Uh, part of it and starts to use it. So thank you very much for your time and uh, good luck in the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thank you.